Gas prices are finally falling. Trump wants to terminate the Constitution. And did a senator fake a death threat against himself? That and more on this week's headlines. Welcome to America Uncovered, I'm Chris Chappell. The Georgia Senate runoff election between Raphael Warnock and Herschel Walker was held this week and Warnock was elected. After endless campaigning costing over $400 million. So that's just hundreds of millions of dollars down the drain for Walker. This is the biggest waste of hundreds of millions of dollars since the Mummy reboot with Tom Cruise. But at least the midterm elections are finally over. That's what I'd be saying if it weren't for the fact that Arizona just certified their midterm results a month after the election. It was delayed due to Republican objections, specifically by gubernatorial candidate Kerry Lake. Luckily in Georgia, Walker conceded. He said he wouldn't make excuses. Seems like he came to term with his loss, which is surprising since Walker is allegedly not great at letting things come to term. Gas prices have dropped by $1.50 a gallon since this summer. And the national average price is now the same as it was this time last year. Yep, we've returned to the good old days of when gas was so cheap, everyone was slapping Biden I did that stickers on gas pumps to complain about how expensive fuel was. Ah, we were so naive to think we thought that's as bad as it would get. California saw the highest increase in gas prices and is now planning to fine oil companies for making too much profit as a result. California Governor Gavin Newsom says this isn't a tax, but a civil penalty. What he didn't say was how much profit was too much and what kind of fine they'd be paying. He also didn't mention that California prices are higher than the rest of the country, partly due to higher taxes, fees, and environmental regulations other states don't have. The Eric Andre meme is a perfect summary of what Gavin Newsom is suggesting. According to a spokesperson for the Western States Petroleum Association, whatever Governor Newsom wants to call it, this is a tax, and it's going to have the same impact that all taxes do on consumers, and that is to raise costs, not bring them down. So California is going to try to bring down gas prices caused largely by their own taxes by implementing a new tax. This is like trying to slay a monster with a boomerang and knocking yourself out. One person happy about lower gas prices is President Biden, who boasted gas prices are down back to where they were before Russia invaded Ukraine. They dropped $1.50 from their peak this summer. Hmm. Biden has been pretty fixated on gas prices during his presidency. Gee, I wonder why. If there were Chris Chappell's breath smells like anchovies ads on every dating site, you can bet I'd also constantly say that's not true. And even if it were, I tell you, it's Putin's fault. So now that gas prices are falling, Biden's actually saying, I did that. But how exactly did he do that? The short answer is, he didn't. It was mostly due to demand dropping worldwide. As much as they're blamed, presidents actually have little control over gas prices. At least that's what they want you to think. Everyone knows the president has a gas price lever behind their desk at the Oval Office. It's right next to the other levers they use to control everything like the economy, the weather, and celebrity deaths. How could Biden do this? Biden did take action, though, to fight rising gas prices. He released nearly 200 million barrels of oil from the U.S. Strategic Petroleum Reserve this year. Some say this depleted the supply to critically low levels. And he might not be replenishing them anytime soon. His administration is being sued for not honoring agreements that would allow oil companies to lease lands for drilling. Couple this with the fact that America will likely be using far less Russian and Saudi Arabian oil going forward, that means gas prices will probably rise again in the near future as demand increases and supply remains limited. But luckily you can probably offset the cost of that by investing now in stickers. This business is going to be booming for at least two more years. More after the break. Welcome back. Although you might not always see ads on our episodes since YouTube often demonetizes us. That's why I decided to take a page out of Alex Jones and the Liver King's playbook. 
And no, I don't mean having arteries more clogged than an LA freeway during rush hour. I'm starting a new supplement line, Chap XL. It'll get you jacked, give you the libido of a teenage rabbit, and doesn't leave an anchovy aftertaste. Don't believe the slander you see on dating sites. It'll boost your immune system too. Good timing too, since the CDC is now recommending people wear masks again over the holidays. So if someone tells you to wear a mask, you tell them you're on CHAP XL, and your immune system is more fortified than the Pentagon. And if they tell you they only want you to wear a mask because your breath smells like anchovies, that's just a coincidence, no refunds. Speaking of things smelling fishy, Donald Trump allegedly saying he wants to terminate the Constitution over the Twitter files revealing suppression of the Hunter Biden story during the 2020 election. You probably heard about this as media outlets have been having a field day with it. Trump has been criticized not only by Democrats, but also Republicans. Here's his actual original tweet. I mean, truth. However, Trump later clarified that he didn't say he wants to terminate the Constitution to make himself president, as many are claiming. He's saying that in the face of massive fraud, which he claims took place, even the procedures laid out in the Constitution wouldn't apply since they were already broken in the first place. At least that's what I assume he's saying. Translating from Trump to English is complex work. The Supreme Court heard a case from a Colorado graphic designer who doesn't want to make wedding websites for same-sex couples due to her religious beliefs. Colorado has anti-discrimination laws that would bar the designer, Lori Smith, from rejecting work from LGBT people despite objections she might have, given her evangelical Christian faith. According to her, we should all be free to live and work consistently with our deeply held beliefs. Now, Smith wasn't actually offered any such work. She's suing preemptively in case this might come up in the future. In fact, a lot of the discussion over this case was hypothetical. Justices wondered where the line was in terms of forcing people to work against their beliefs. And if, this is real, black Santas should be compelled to allow kids dressed in KKK robes to sit on their laps, which would be a ridiculous reason to sue Santa, especially since Santa should already be in prison for breaking and entering, stalking, and entering the country without a passport. There's precedent for Smith's case, though. In 2018, the Supreme Court ruled that a Colorado baker was exempt from anti-discrimination laws when they refused to make a cake for a gay wedding due to religious beliefs. The court decided his First Amendment rights supersede the Colorado law. And as of now, the court seems to side with Smith for First Amendment reasons, too. The question remains of where the line is. Would this mean that atheists can refuse to serve Christians? Vegans can refuse to serve meat eaters? I can refuse to refund CHAP XL. And after the break, WNBA star Brittany Griner is released from prison in Russia. Welcome back. WNBA star Brittany Griner was freed from Russian prison. The Russians released her in exchange for the U.S., releasing Russian arms dealer Viktor Bout, a.k.a. the Merchant of Death. I know that doesn't seem like a fair trade, but the Biden administration was willing to negotiate with terrorists over a terrorist for moral reasons. Because Biden believes no one should be unfairly imprisoned just for marijuana possession. In Russia, obviously it's fine to lock up tens of thousands of people in American prisons for marijuana. I wonder if California prisons have Kamala Harris I did that stickers. However, former Marine Paul Whelan, whose release from Russian imprisonment over espionage charges was also being negotiated, was left behind. This is the second time Whelan was denied release in a prisoner exchange. Russia has refused to release him because he's being held on espionage charges. Whelan's brother said the Biden administration made the right decision to bring Miss Griner home and to make a deal that was possible rather than waiting for one that wasn't going to happen. But how do you continue to survive day after day when you know that your government has failed twice to free you from a foreign prison? If you're wondering why they couldn't get Whelan free, it's because he was guilty of a much more serious crime. Not being famous. This has to be especially tough for him since it shows the U.S. supports veterans less than the WNBA. And WNBA players' fame level is somewhere between that one viral dress and Chewbacca's mom. Hope Russia doesn't detain them. Speaking of people who are powerless, shootings at two electric substations in Moore County, North Carolina, left over 45,000 residents without power. 
According to authorities, this was a deliberate, coordinated attack, as the two substations were five miles apart. The sheriff says the shooter knew exactly what they were doing. In that case, I bet the suspect is a gamer, because every first-person shooter for the last 20 years has at least five boring Disable the Power missions to pad out the playtime. The power was out for days, which is rough, but considering how many bars there are in North Carolina, this actually lasted less time than most people's typical blackouts. Police are seeking a concrete motive for the shooting, but many online have suggested this shooting was done to stop a nearby drag show, and authorities haven't ruled that out as a possibility. Drag shows, especially those including children, have become a hot-button issue, and a few have seen people show up in military gear to protest which must have been scary for the performers, and awesome for the kids. To them, it must have looked like when they make G.I. Joes and Barbies battle, but in real life. Those protesting drag shows accuse the performers and parents who take their children to these events of being groomers. Right-wing personality Charlie Kirk accused Democratic and openly gay California Senator Scott Weiner of being soft on child molesters. This is due to a bill written by Wiener, SB 145, that some claim legalizes pedophilia in California. In actuality, it decriminalizes certain sexual acts and gives judges discretion over whether or not to register someone as a sex offender in instances of statutory rape. Under old laws, for example, an 18-year-old boy who sleeps with a 17-year-old boy would automatically be registered as a sex offender. Whereas if an 18-year-old boy sleeps with a 17-year-old girl, that would be left up to the judge to decide. Wiener said shortly after he was attacked by Kirk online, he received a death threat. However, many questioned if this threat was real. In it, you can see spelling suggestions and a cursor at the end suggesting it was a screen cap from something Wiener typed. I don't know why anyone was suggesting that, though. That would be like doubting this totally real love note I got from Scarlett Johansson. What looks fake about this? Wiener said this was just a transcript from a voicemail he received. Although when asked to release the voicemail, he didn't reply. And why should he? I mean, it's not like anyone's ever faked a hate crime against themselves to gain attention or sympathy before. Wiener has actually received death threats in the past, however. One man was convicted for making a threat on his life earlier this year, and Wiener received a bomb threat a few days after his alleged voicemail death threat. Wiener blames Kirk for all these threats against him. Man, it sounds like everyone just needs to chill. I know what would help. Just close your eyes, take a deep breath, and enjoy a nice tub of Chap XL. It'll lower your stress and grow hair on your ankles. Then we should join together and demand Biden pull his chill-out lever. Come on, man. So what do you think about the stories we covered this week? Leave your comments below. And if you want to help us deliver nonpartisan news, be sure to support America Uncovered by going to patreon.com slash America Uncovered. All it takes is as little as a dollar or more per episode to fight YouTube censorship and demonetization. We rely on your support to help us keep making great episodes. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. Thanks for watching America Uncovered.